completion of the refresher course in e-content and MOOC, which will be held through Zoom platform and being organized by this UGC Malvia Mission Teachers Training Program. Course coordinator for this refresher course, Dr. Ramesh Manjasa is presently working as a professor in the Department of uh, Computer Science and IT of our university. He has completed his MSc in 1996 NetSet in the year, year 2002. MSc IT in the year 2004, PhD in computer science way back in the year 2006. His area of specialization include biomedical image processing, diabetic, retinopathy, pattern recognition, machine learning and computer vision. He has published around 187 papers at national and international conferences and around 156 papers in reputed journal. He has completed first UGC research project on diabetic uh, a retinopathy of 12 lakh. Second major research project sanctioned by DST on diabetic retinopathy to bypass the retinal angiography of rupees 24 lakhs and third of 32 lakhs 96,000 on design and development of a hyper spectacle data analysis tool and algorithm for the end member identification by DST. Again, a person with a vast teaching and research experience uh, <clears throat> has successfully uh, guided uh, 17 students for their PhD and uh, 29 students have uh, been awarded MPhil under his able guidance. Also, he has authored 12 books and uh, working as an editorial board member of three international uh, journals, has also uh, successfully organized international conferences and uh, workshops. He, uh, he has also organized refresher courses, uh, orientation courses, faculty development program and delivered speeches uh, in these various types of program and has been association with many universities and uh, colleges. So I would now request uh, Professor Ramesh Manja, sir, to give uh, the briefing of 12 working days to all of us. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good morning to all of you. Respected chairman of today's inaugural function of online interdisciplinary refresher course on e-content development and MOOCs, Senior Professor and Director of UGC MMTTC of Dr. Baba Sai Bambedkar Maratwada University, Chhatrapati Sambhaji Nagar, Professor Satish Patil Sir, Chief Guest of today's inaugural function, Professor R.S. Hegdi Sir, Assistant Director Dr. Mohammad Rafi Sir, all supporting staff of UGC MMTTC, and you all fellow participants. Today we have online connected for inaugural function of refresher course on e-content development and MOOCs, which is scheduled during 15 January 2024 to 29 January 2024. Total number of participants we have with in this refresher course are around 29 from span of India. Total number of session scheduled are 45. Total number of resource person which will be going to guide during this period which are also from span of India are 24. During these online sessions, various topics will be covered related to e-content development and MOOCs. Few of them are like open source learning management system, animation software tools, features of various animation software tools used for content development like twinning, etc. Video recording process and their respective tools, video editing tools and softwares, content creations, online teaching, learning and evaluation, online monitoring of student progress, online assessment, online quizzes, etc. While there are many benefits to online teaching, such as convenience, flexibility and affordability, there are also some downsides. E-learning offers several advantages over traditional education, including greater accessibility regardless of location, resource scalability, improve academic results, self-paced learning, and cost-effectiveness. Positive effects of e-learning such as self-pacing, which reduces stress and increases satisfaction. This self-paced approach empowers learners to deliver deeper into complex topic or bridge through familiar concepts, enhancing overall comprehension and retention. Learning also foster a collaborative learning experiences. 
I am very much sure you will get lots of takeaway at the end of this refresher course. I wish you all the best. Thank you, one and all. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Chief guest of uh, this uh, inaugural session, Professor R.S. Hegri, sir. Senior member, I Tripoli, working in Central University of Karnataka. Also, he will be delivering lecture uh, in the course. So, a brief introduction of uh, him will be given by uh, role number one uh, in the uh, next session. And by that time, I would request R.S. Hegeri, sir, to uh, deliver an inaugural address uh, within a few minutes to all of us. Good morning. Hope I'm audible. Yes, you are audible, sir. Good morning to one and all. Uh, uh, the coordinator of the program, uh, Professor Manja, sir. The director, Patil, sir and uh, all the members, participants, faculty members, uh, and my dear colleagues. So this is a very good initiative by the university to uh, conduct a um, um, conduct on this uh, topic. Teaching learning is the fundamental part of our teachers, teaching, learning, uh, evaluation. This is the fundamental duty. Apart from that, we are going to do so many other duties. Uh, but uh, basically, we are expected to be a very good teacher. We are uh, in the current scenario, particularly after the COVID period, the use of technology has extensively increased. You can see now, uh, prior to COVID period, even as a computer science teacher, I was not aware of many of the technologies. And uh, the COVID forced us to use this technology and uh, because of that now we can see a tremendous changes in the way we teach we deliver the lecture we do evaluation and all despite covid is not there still we are using many of the technologies because it has made our life very convenient very easy we can keep the records we can uh, communicate the students at any moment okay there is no barrier of uh, day night and all the, we can deliver the our uh, lecture notes, we can conduct the quizzes, we can conduct the things, uh, we can do any activity despite uh, uh, without any classroom limitation. Of course, we are also teaching in the classroom. So uh, today I am going to talk about the use of Moodle, the features of the Moodle because Moodle is a very popular software and uh, it is free of cost. And uh, uh, it's a very popular, it has so many features. I will try to cover some part of it. I will try to explain some of the features in the later lecture. But this is a very good opportunity for all of you to learn so many technologies because these technologies are uh, very useful for you to improve your teaching learning process, to interact with the students. And that will give you a more uh, strength to you when you go to classroom. That's how you can uh, have a better capability. So with these few words, I again thank all the uh, members and uh, the university for giving me an opportunity. Thank you one and all. Thank you, sir. Respected president of uh, this <laughs> inaugural session, director of this UGC Malvia Mission Teachers Training Program, Professor Dr. Satish Patil, sir, a luminary in realm of environment science. His illustrious career woven with accomplishment, accolades, and profound commitment to the field, currently holding the esteemed position of senior professor at Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Maratwada uh, University in Chhatrapati, Sambhaji Nagar, Professor Patil has left a indelible mark through his multifaced uh, contribution. Dr. Patil's journey at BAMU has marked a uh, by a series of administrative roles, each testifying to his leadership, acumen, and dedication to academic excellence. Serving as a director of uh, Board of College and University Development, he has Autrich's Poitral Initiative. His stints as an in-charge officer of academic planning and reflected his strategic foresight in steering the academic tragedy of BAMU. 
a seasoned academician dr patil has twice assumed the mantle of head of uh, department of environmental science showcasing his enduring commitment to shaping the next generation of environmental sciences his visionary leadership during 2006 and 8 and 2017 to 20 left an indelible imprint on the department in the realm of research dr patil has a trailblazer two patent innovations stand test emitted to his innovative spirit undertaken 12 research project with total outlay of 76 lakh he has developed into complexity of environmental science contributing significantly to the academic and scientific community as a mentor dr parktel impact through the success of his phd students with 30 awarded phd and six currently working under his able guidance he exemplifies the art of nurturing research scholars his scholarly endeavor extend globally having participated and attended nash Uh, 19 international conferences and 58 national conferences dr patil's global footprint is not confined to the conference alone he has extensively traveled to nine countries including germany italy switzerland nepal bhutan sri lanka dubai thailand and the maldives underscores his commitment to fostering international collaboration and gaining diverse perspectives a prolific author to dr patil has 134 research publication in various national and international journal boasting an as a impressive impact factor of 52 additionally his literary contribution include 14 books and 5 book chapters further enriching the academic landscape international collaboration with university of rajshahi bangladesh and East, uh, eastern university sri lanka showcase dr patil's commitment to fostering global perspective his recognition extend beyond borders with prestigious awards such as environmentalist of the year 2017 and scientist of the year 2018 or during his adolescence laden career the clean environment promotion award 2018 further solidified his commitment to environmental causes Fellowship from Indian Association of Technical Biologists, International Congress of Chemistry and Environment, and Microbiology Society of India highlights his stature in the scientific community. Life membership in the International Foundation of Environmental and Ecology underlines his enduring commitment to environmental advocacy. In every phase of his career, Professor Satish Patil embodies excellence, dedication, and a relentless pursuit of knowledge. His impact on environmental science and academia is not just local, but global making him a true luminary in his field so i would now request professor satish patil sir to deliver a presidential remarks to this inaugural session good afternoon all of you respected chief guest of the today's <clears throat> function that is a refresher course on the e content development and moocs professor are segadi who is a senior professor and member of the ieee of the central university of karnataka the course coordinator my friend professor and head department of computer science and information technology dr ramesh manja assistant director of the academy staff college of mmttc that is malwiya mission teachers training center of hrd university uh, hrd <coughs> ugc of dr baba saheb ambedkar marathwada university chatrapati sambhaji nagar all the fellow participants ladies and gentlemen i am happy to see that the refresher course particularly on the uh, the e content development and the books on the background of the implementation of nep 2020 is a very important refresher course and it is a great opportunity to all the participants to contribute to participate themselves for the e content development because it is a need of the time and as rightly been pointed out by uh, the course coordinator ramesh mandha sir there will be 45 sessions including this morning session and in these 45 sessions participants should be used to develop a e content because all the resource persons will share their experiences and will help to develop the e content for each and every participants because you know that as manja sir rightly pointed out that the this is a right platform where we can have we can share the resources not only from the uh, the state but from the country and even abroad i will request the course coordinator to have A, 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 a particularly on the content development and even the online courses have a resource person from the 
the uh, uh, international boundaries also, international from the other countries also, because it is very, a very important. Because e content development will be the uh, future, uh, the need of the future. Because that is the way of sharing the resources and knowledge across the country. And if you could have a partnership of that kind among the teachers, even if that is that provides the opportunity for all the teacher participants to interact with the international, uh, the, the experts in the field. And I'm happy and I believe that the Manjasar will definitely take care of this and we'll see that the all participants that is, uh, the fellow participants of the refresher course will be updated and they will be well aware of developing the content and they will also contribute to the national repository as far as the e-content courses are concerned. And that is a contribution at the national level. I think it will be taken care of by the, not only by the course coordinator, but also by the participants. And we see that, uh, we'll, <coughs> be, we'll see that the, all the resource persons who are uh, addressing them who are mentoring them, who are sharing their experiences. I think the participants will also share their experiences with them and will update themselves during the course of time. So I'm very happy to see that the, uh, uh, of course, in my, as far as my tenure is concerned, this is the first refresher course and it has started with the content development. It is a uh, my like-minded subject and I also developed some e-contents in my subject. I think with during this course, even after the completion of this course, few of the content uh, development will be there and the participants will take care of, see that they'll be a part of the e-content development. Uh, with this, I congratulate to the all the participants for participating and I believe that during the course, during the, the, the course of time, the all the sessions will be very fruitful. There will be good discussions, participative uh, discussions will be there, interactive, uh, uh, all the sessions will be very interactive. And the success of the course, of course, lies with the active participation of all the, all the participants. And if you could be able to do this, I think that is the way towards make the India as a Vishwa Guru. And that is what, that is the mission of the NEP that in the years to come, by 230, 2035, India should be a Vishwa Guru even in the education sector. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. So, oh, on behalf of uh, all the participants, and uh, especially behalf of, of on Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Maratwada University, my special thanks to the chief guest for sparing his valuable time for this. Uh, inaugural session and uh, as a full flesh lecture of uh, uh, Professor R.S. Hegade sir is uh, scheduled now. So with the permission of uh, the president, I declare yes. that uh, this uh, uh, inaugural session is over and uh, I, will, I would now hand over the uh, session to R.S. Hegade sir and before that I would request roll number one to start, uh, give a brief introduction of R.S. Hegris. Thank you. Thanks, Lords. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am Akhil Verma, Assistant Professor, Samastipur College, Etihaz Vivaag, se, UGC, MMTC, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Marathawada University, ke Tattwadhan me Ayojit Refresher Course ke Pahle Session me UGC, MMTTC, Marathawada University ke Director Professor Satish Patil, Sir, Course Coordinator Ramesh Manja, Sir, or Assistant Coordinator Dr. Mohammad Abdul Rafe, Sir, Yom Sabhi Pritibhagyon ki taraf se Professor R.S. Hegri, Sir, ka hardik avinandan yon swagat karta hun. Professor Hegri, Sir, Vartaman me Central University of Karnataka me Professor ke patpar karirat hain, or Sir, I ट्रिपल ई के वरिष्ठ सदस्य के रूप में भी कार्य कर रहे हैं सर का एरिया ऑफ रिसर्च डिजिटल इमेज प्रोसेसिंग कंप्यूटर विजन मेडिकल इमेज एनालिसिस डॉक्यूमेंट इमेज एनालिसिस बायोमेट्रिक्स रोबोटिक्स डेटा साइंस मशीन लर्निंग एंड एआई के क्षेत्र में है 
सर पिछले 26 वर्षों से अधिक विभिन्न विश्वविद्यालयों में अध्यापन कार्य किए हैं सर ने सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कर्नाटक में कंप्यूटर साइंस विभाग में विभाग अध्यक्ष के रूप में डीन एवं भारत सरकार के प्रोजेक्ट समर्थ परियोजना में नोडल ऑफिसर के रूप में अनेक प्रशासनिक पदों पर महत्वपूर्ण रूप से योगदान दिया है सर ने अपने निर्देशन में 16 से अधिक छात्रों को सुधार पीएचडी एवं 16 छात्रों को एम में मार्गदर्शन सफलतापूर्वक किया है सर को डिजिटल इंफॉर्मेशन मैनेजमेंट की पहली अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉन्फ्रेंस में इंडोस्कोपिक इमेज क्लासिफिकेशन बेस्ड ऑन एक्टिव कंट्रोवर्स विदाउट एजेस शोध पत्र में बेस्ट रिसर्च पेपर अवार्ड से सम्मानित किया गया सर ने विभिन्न संस्थाओं से अनुदानित अनुदानित यूजीसी डीएसटी आदि संस्थाओं से आदि संस्थाओं के द्वारा मेजर प्रोजेक्ट पर कार्य किया है प्रोफेसर सर को कर्नाटक सरकार के द्वारा 30 मार्च 2023 को प्रोफेसर सतीश धवन यंग इंजीनियर अवार्ड 2020 से भी सम्मानित किया गया है तो सर का जो आज का सेशन जो काफी महत्वपूर्ण रहेगा हमें आशा है कि हमें बहुत सारी जानकारी और ज्ञानवर्धक जानकारी मिलेगी जिससे हमें करियर और अपने आने वाले समय में हम सदुपयोग कर सकते हैं थैंक यू सर और टी यू सर धन्यवाद सर आपका हार्दिक अभिनंदन करता हूँ थैंक यू होप आई एम ऑडिबल यस सर ओके तो टुडे I will uh, deliver a lecture on Moodle Learning Management System. So most of you must have heard about the Moodle. Uh, Moodle is one of the software or uh, learning management system which is being used across the many countries across the globe. So today we are going to learn the features. We will only learn what are the features of uh, this Moodle. uh because if you want to digitize your teaching learning and then you want to create any course content particularly these kind of software are very useful and uh, why i have chosen the moodle because there are many alternatives many commercially <coughs> commercial software are available why i have chosen the moodle it is because moodle is a open source software open source software means it is free of cost anybody can use the moodle without paying any amount you can just download the moodle free of cost and you can create your own server and then you can start using the moodle so for that reason uh, anybody can use it and secondly this is a very very popular software it is so well known that across the world many companies many uh, many universities many institutions are using this software So for that reason, portability is uh, one important issue. Uh, a student who is learning in your institution later he move on to some other institution. Then if you have adopted the Moodle, there is every possibility that the other institution also may be using the Moodle. It will become very easy for that student to for portability. He can understand. He can very easily adapt to that environment. So for that reason, I chosen this Moodle. So let us start with understanding. the features of moodle in this talk what i am going to cover is i will talk about i will first let you know what is a moodle then uh, what are the activities and resources that are there in the moodle then how to access it how to uh, use this moodle and then learning activities that is best practices that are followed through the moodle then we will look at the course formats what are the features available in the uh, different course formats and all then we will look at the embedded uh, external resources that means we apart from the moodle we can use in the moodle we can use other external resources also that we are going to talk about then uh, one an overview of the moodle main features then uh, how we can use the moodle cloud that means uh, suppose for example you are a small user then having your own uh, server or your own cloud is your own server is very difficult you can you can hire the cloud okay you can hire some space which is commonly available <coughs> so we will look at how you can uh, use this cloud for uh, using the moodle then if there are any questions i will i will be able to address them so let us understand what is a moodle the 
Moodle is a learning software. Okay, it is called as learning management system, LMS. Moodle is a LMS. So it is a free. Okay, so free means you need not pay any amount. Many people are not aware of what is a free open source software. Okay, it is a free open source course management system. That is a learning management system. So many people don't know what is a free software. So if you are using in your laptop, if you are using Windows, in your desktop, Windows, MS Office and all, you are actually not aware whether it is a free software, whether it is a paid software and all. Because you, uh, you, you, when you go, when you purchase any, uh, uh, any system, then uh, wherever you purchase, that person will do, he will load all the software, all the software and he will give you. But actually not aware whether it is a free software, paid software and all. So you need to very much understand these things because as a professional, I have to be aware of these things, whether my software, what I am using, whether it is a free of cost, whether it is a paid one, whether it is a illegal one, legal one and all. So MS Office, Windows, all these are licensed software. They are not free of cost. Okay. Suppose when you purchase a system, when you purchase a soft, uh, laptop, there are two types of things you will purchase. One is preloaded. Preloaded means license is there already. Okay. And uh, that license is allowed for you people on your system. Okay. You can use those licenses on your system. Okay. You cannot transfer it to somebody else. And uh, sometimes what happens, unknowingly, uh, like generally we will get Windows as a preloaded. That means it will come with the system <clears throat> because of uh, for that you have already paid. But what they will do, they will also load you MS Office. <laughs> Actually, MS Office does not come free of cost. Okay, <laughs> it will be a it will be unlicensed software. So later, in any case, if any problem happens, if somebody caught you, then you need to pay fine for that. Okay, so there is even a uh, there is even a possibility of some uh, case against you. Okay. If there is a legal case happens, then even <clears throat> you may be going to jail also. So we should avoid such legal software, uh, illegal use of software, which are paid one. But Moodle is free. Okay. Nobody questions you. You can download any number of times. You can use it any number of times. So that's why it is totally free. You can use any uh, without any problem. Now we will come to what is the long form of Moodle. M, -O -D -E. M stands for modular. O objective. It is modular objective orient uh, object oriented dynamic learning environment. So it's a standard software. Okay, modular. Modular means <coughs> it has so many modules. Okay. For uh, uh, for developing a uh, quiz, there is one module. For uh, uh, storing the lecture notes, there is another module. Okay, for uh, conducting test, there is a module. <clears throat> like this, so many modules it has. And they are put together. That's why it is modular. And object-oriented dynamics. So there is, in a programming language, we call object-oriented and uh, uh, formal programming languages. We, we do have a classification. So you need not understand about that. Then it is a learning environment. Okay. It creates an environment for learning. Okay. You need to understand here. It creates an environment for learning. Those who want to learn, it creates an environment for them. So Moodle is a very, very popular uh, software. As I told you, it is being used in more than 200 countries. And this Moodle is available in more than 100 plus languages. Most probably, Moodle may be available in Marathi, Kannada, Telugu, Tamil, okay, Hindi, all these languages. Okay, you need to explore if you want to use this Moodle in your own language. Since I use in, com uh, in English because I am a computer science teacher, I have not explored whether Moodle is available in my own language that is Kannada or in a Marathi language or in a Tamil, Telugu or Hindi, okay? But <clears throat> there may be some teachers who may be uh, teachers for uh, uh, social science, okay, who may teach in uh, Marathi language. There may be teachers who are teaching in Hindi, uh, Hindi teachers may be there or Marathi teachers may be there. 
so you people can explore it well if may not be available if it is not available in marathi definitely it is available in the hindi language so you can explore hindi and marathi are quite similar you can explore and you can use them so basically this moodle was created in 1999 okay initial uh, first it started in 1999 by a person called as uh, martin dogo uh, dogia mass okay it's a uh, web city administrator at curtin you know, curtin university australia okay this was the uh, this is where it started first and uh, what is the version of the moodle the stable version okay so every time whenever they do small modification and all they will come out with the version but at certain situation they call them as a stable version so its stable version is 4.3.2 plus okay now uh, uh, i will uh, start exploring the moodle so actually central university of karnataka is using moodle for its uh, teaching learning process so i will just show you how we are using uh, okay if you want to know more about that i will just show you so this is a uh, uh, central university of karnataka website so if you go to this website so website address is cuk.ac.in www.cuk.ac.in if you you will get this screen on the website okay and then at the corner okay at the uh, bottom uh, right corner you can see there is one lms okay. if you click on this lms you are going to get this screen okay so what we did uh we have a uh, basically we have a central repository at uh, our library okay we have created one server dedicated server for this moodle and through this dedicated server we use entire thing for our entire university and then we have uh, actually we need not uh, divide it department wise but still we have done department wise separate uh, repository for the moodle so not department school so we have around 8 to 10 schools okay school of computer science physical science business studies so whichever school people are using okay they can just select through this classification they can select <clears throat> their specific schools so their students related to that school they can go there now i will show you how we can log in so as i told you it is a dedicated server we have dedicated one ip address and that ip address see these are technical thing okay you need not worry about that if your institution or if your uh, college if your university wish to adopt moodle then they will do all this technical background so only thing is you should know to log in okay how to enter into moodle and how to do activities in the moodle that i am going to focus on so this is the ip address which is a dedicated ip address that is being given for our university moodle so we have uh this is for school of computer science so once i click on this our school of computer science my login appears here so i have a username and i have a password once i put username and password i will enter into my moodle uh, site okay so if time permits i will show you how i have designed my last course i have taught in my last session i have two courses one is digital image processing four credit course and then lab related to digital image uh, processing that is two credit course okay so i have created entire thing so i will check whether how much time uh, i think up to 1 130 uh, i have to deliver the talk so last 30 minutes i will dedicate for the uh, for showing you uh, how i have uh, created my course okay. so before that yes okay so let us move on to understand the different contents that is different features of a moodle so the moodle users are divided into uh, basically four categories okay one is the administrator teacher and non editing teachers so this is one group it forms one group and then students is the another group students who is the end user okay end user so administrator i think more detail about that Uh, okay administrator what administrator will do that all i will explain in the next slide so administrator teacher and non editing teacher these are one separate group 
administrator basically is the person who creates the Moodle server. Okay, who will uh, create the user, teachers, non-editing teachers, student, everything is created by the administrator. So administrator can be one person or they can be, there can be multiple administrators. But for entire Moodle server or for administrating entire Moodle, there will be one main administrator who can create the multiple sub-administrators. Okay, there can be more than, suppose there is a very big institution uh, administering the entire Moodle server by one person may not be possible. Suppose, like for example, our university, it is having a strength of 2,500. So one administrator can manage. Suppose there are 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 1 lakh students, then managing the Moodle server with one administrator will become very, very difficult. At that situation, there can be under one administrator, there can be multiple five to six administrators who can be administering at their different role. Then teacher, uh, administrator will create uh, schools, departments, all those things, and then he will create the courses and all. Okay. So actually what happens in our university, the administrator has given sub-administration to the department heads or school uh, deans. Okay. Those school deans will create, department heads or school deans will create the courses. Okay, will create the courses, will create the students in their department, classes, department, uh, 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 students, groups, all that are created by our heads. Okay, then what they will do in the start of the course, uh, in the initial stage of that semester, they will uh, distribute the courses. Okay. So each uh, teacher will be assigned different course. And when each teacher is assigned with the different course, then uh, in the Moodle we assign that, administrator will assign or the dean or HOD will assign. So once that course is assigned, automatically to that course, students are also already, already it is declared. Like for example, MCA first semester. So in the first semester, all the students will automatically come into that course. Then generally, we have seen in the foreign system, there is a, uh, for every course, there will be one teacher and there will be some uh, instructors. Instructor, what is the job of instructor? See, I am a course teacher. I will teach the course. Okay. Then uh, the instructor will create the assignments. Instructor will do evaluations. All these are done by the instructors. So the teacher will not do all these. So if the teacher may give assignments, but evaluation, evaluation and all will be done by the instructors. So those are called as non-editing teacher. Okay, non-editing teacher. So we can add the, uh, if any such non-editing teachers are there, we can add them to the uh, those courses and then the non-editing teacher will do all those assigned works. Then students are the end users. Okay. Without two students, there is no meaning for any Moodle because Moodle is uh, done for the students itself. See, the administrator, teacher, non-editing teacher, these interfaces are different. Student interface is different. Student will not be able to access any other course except whatever the courses that are assigned to him or her. Okay. Suppose the student is learning four courses in this semester, he will only be able to access those four courses will not be able to any access anything other than that. So now we will come to the different parts of the Moodles. Uh, Moodle. So the uh, let us look at the administrative part. So the administration has all this. What are those? So administrator can do the settings such as user editing. Okay, then you, you can create users, can do user enrollment for the Moodles. Uh, then uh, you can create the filter to check uh, which are the courses, which are the students. Like, for example, I want to assign a particular course to a particular set of students. So what we generally do is we create the students based on their enrollment number. Okay, their role number. Year-wise, we will create the enrollment number. Enrollment number, course which they have uh, been like, for example, MCA, MBA, okay, engineering, BTEC, MTEC. So depending on the course, they have uh, roll numbers. Okay. First year, year will be created 2023 enrollment, 2024 enrollment like that. Then uh, their uh, like MCA means uh, P, PZ, MCA. Then their uh, serial number comes one, two, three, four like that. Okay. 
so we can filter the students and we can assign to the courses so for that reason filter option is there then there are reports then uh, there is a grade book this is a very beautiful uh, feature that is available in the course that is grade book setup so we need to learn a lot of we need to do a lot of practice to fine tune the grade book like basically grade book is used to grading the students okay we can uh, uh, we can conduct the test, we can give them assignments, based on that we can evaluate them, how much marks we assign to those uh, tests, uh, how much grading we give for the assignments, all those we can do in the gradebook. Then there are something additional features, badges, then we have the uh, uh, back, we, backup option is there, backup restore option is there, we can even do import. Okay, suppose there is a large number of students uh, and we have other software for that purpose that we can import those students into our Moodle. Okay, that is also possible. Then uh, we can publish in our Moodle content into, web, into website because uh, for the NAC and all it is required. Suppose we want to publish some reports onto our website. In the NAC, this is the basic requirement. We can do that. Then uh, question bank. We, uh, we can create a question bank, common question bank. So generally we can see these question banks are created and then they are uh, published onto the, uh, they, they can be used for conducting quizzes, for conducting tests, all those kind of things. So we can create a common repositories. Then uh, there are other repositories, then all these kind of features are there. So these are all controlled by the administrator. As a teacher, you need not worry about that. Okay, you need to hire an administrator or one among a, a expert teacher. In our university, there is one uh, uh, assistant professor is there. Okay, he's actually my PhD student. Uh, he did PhD when I was there in the Solapur University, uh, Dr. P.M. Kamble, Parshuram Kamble. So he is our Moodle administrator. He is administering entire things. And he need not go to server. He uh, do it uh, through remote. Suppose, for example, now he is on the uh, uh now he's on the vacation he's in his uh, hometown uh, but i want to access moodle suppose something happened i will uh, tell him so he will access through his laptop only and he do setting okay so he is a moodle administrator so this is the task of the moodle administrator he know everything okay he will do many of these activities as a teacher i even don't know many of these features even though i am using moodle from so many years i don't know many of these features a few of the features i know but many of these features i don't know because he he is doing all those things now uh the course format so this is how we the administrator create the course format so uh he can set how many sections it can have suppose under your university or under your institution there is a common format for your syllabus then you can create number of sections then uh, you can create hidden sections course layout so hidden sections are required when you want to hide them from the student okay so for that reason you can even provide that then course layout all those things so these are the administrative part so the same thing they have given more in detail here uh, the topic format and all uh, then uh, you can do all these settings grid format single activity format so social format uh, collapsed uh, topics, topic format, weekly format, all this. See what happens when administrator is creating, by default, it will take many of these. Okay, even he need not mention it. See, by default, it is a five uh, number of sections. But in our university, we have four sections. Okay, so this by default comes. But as a teacher, I can add more sections. I can delete the sections. These can be done. So these are by default format. By default format means whenever new course you create, automatically these comes. Okay. Uh, now look at, like for example, here one thing is created. No, you can create like, for example, notes. There is one section created called as notes. Another section created as a assignments. Then the oral presentation. Then examination. So four section a teacher have created here. Okay, some teacher. Okay, some, some teacher have created. So what are the four sections? One is notes he has created. Generally what we do, we create, a, I create a common uh, section. I will show you my Moodle also. I create one common section. There common things I will put. Then in my course, there are four sections. Okay, my course DIP, Digital Image Processing, there are four sections. 
okay for each section i will create and under that section i will put the notes uh, related to that i will put the any anything related to that i will show you that uh, but he, here they have created like this okay so then uh, here you you can see different courses okay uh, uh, he has created a forum forum means a kind of a common area where students and uh, teachers will interact so that is being created over here so uh, okay so topic as soon as one course is created it will be empty initially okay nothing will be there so you need to start designing content in that so you can see here uh, five topics we have given no? by default in the initial section so one course is being created moodle and box some course title is given okay then uh, the teacher name is given five topics are appearing here. okay and there is one announcement so this announcement is required suppose you want to announce something like you want to declare that there is a test on so and so date so and so time you can give that as an announcement okay you are giving a assignment and you want the assignment in the assignment itself we can set okay when deadline but still you want to as announce as a uh, about that so then you can create this as an announcement suppose the university declared the end semester exam okay then you can put that notification in the announcement so announcement basically will keep on showing them on their mobile app okay so this moodle mobile app is also available okay and the students will access the mobile app at any time they can access the mobile app because nowadays we can see students are accessing things on their mobile instead of using their computer or desktop computers all that why because desktop and uh, laptop are restricted during certain period you cannot carry uh, to the, your laptop or desktop desktop you cannot carry anywhere but even you can carry laptop somewhere but if you are going for a uh, gym or if you are going for a uh, lunch or dinner you cannot carry all this no so for that reason laptop is the easy so student can access in the these courses and all in their laptop but for teachers convenient uh, in, in their mobile but for teachers convenient way is to use desktop and laptop why because putting the course all those things will become very tedious in the mobile but teachers can also use in the mobile there is absolutely no problem suppose you want to deliver a talk and you are not going to use any ppt and all it is very easy with the mobile okay but if you want to deliver a talk with the, your presentation, you want to use some program, you want to show something and all, then on the mobile, it will become very, very difficult. So you can carry your laptop or you can deliver a le lecture on the desktop computers. So that will be more convenient, more easy. Why? Because presentation and all will become very easy over there. <clears throat> so here, uh, like we have created a even schedule also for that. Okay. Uh, then here, the, like uh, I will show you all those things. I will show you with my course when I go to my course. So there's some uh, uh, basically here two ways you can do uh, topic one, topic two like this, and then you can create a schedule also August twenty five to thirty first, then first September to seven. So what all thing I am going to cover? What chapters? What topics I am going to cover? Those schedules are also given. Okay, so these are related to topics only. Now, uh, here, the, the section-wise content are being given over here. Okay, section-wise content is being created over here. So then uh, you can see here, uh, one uh, uh, thing is, once you go into Moodle, it will be, editing will be basically off. Okay, you need to uh, on it, okay. So I can show you the entire screen here. My, you please follow my cursor movement. Here it will show you username, okay, and which language you are going to use. If you have logged in, then only your user username will be visible. Otherwise, it will say first login. Without login, any content will not appear into Moodle. So first thing, what you need to do is you have to log in. So once you log in. This right corner, okay, top corner. So here, one right is there, so that is the username. And okay, 
So then which language you are using? Hope I'm audible. There is a, some internet uh, disturbance is there. Okay. So then uh, which language you are using? That it will show you. Then your uh, interface. This is your interface. Okay. Then if you want to edit your course, first you need to turn on editing. Okay. I will show you live in my uh, Okay. All this. Then here you can design this interface. Okay, you can design this interface as you wish to. So this teacher has put a student list on one side here. And then he has also put the calendar also. Okay, in the calendar, you can uh, you can create your calendar in the Moodle. And you can give the schedules also. Suppose you have the course uh, schedules, you can create that in the calendar. Okay, so it will create the schedules for that in the calendar. He has put a quick mail, something like that at the bottom, like that. And this is the main screen where course related content is visible uh, in the rest of the part. You can see in the rest of the part. Now we will go more about the Moodle features. So these are all features available in the Moodle. Moodle has a plenty of features, Okay, plenty of features. I am showing you very few features. Okay, I think more features are available. And using all features is very, very difficult. Uh, means it's a it has a plenty of features. Okay. Even as I am using this Moodle from so many years, still I am using, I think, hardly five, five to six features or maybe eight to ten features. I will tell you what are the features I am using. So let us look at each one of them in more detail. Okay. So we have assignment feature. I am using that. We have attendance features. During the uh, during the uh, Corona period, I have used this attendance feature extensively, but now I am using the manual fee attendance. Okay, I am not using this. But what I am doing for Mars calculation purpose at the end of the semester, I am putting this attendance. Okay, that gives you mark. Uh, I will give you five hundred assessment marks for attendance. So for that reason, I am putting total attendance attended by the student. So if we use the modal attendance, it has a very wonderful feature. Okay, a student can mark their attendance automatically. Okay, we can give you one code for them and they can mark the attendance automatically. So very advanced features are available for attendance. Then uh, blue button, BL. big blue button, it is a, uh, it's a, oh, it's a, uh, video conference it is integrated with the Moodle it is a free video conferencing software like you are using now zoom zoom is a paid version pay but big button big blue button it is a free video conferencing software okay we can use for our lecture delivery and all we can use even you can use the Google meet also Google meet also uh, is a limited free software it is not a fully Available recording option is not available in the Google Meet. But big blue button, it is a free, full version is free. Okay, 100% you can use this. Then we have a chat option. Then we have a checklist. Then choice. Then database. I have also not explored much. External tools. Okay. We can use the external tools like Google Meet. Google Meet is an external tool. Okay, suppose you want to draw some drawing using some external tool. You want to use a paint. Okay. So those external tools are available. You can integrate these external tools with the Moodle. We can integrate them. Integrate means we can put them inside the Moodle and whenever we want to use, we can directly use them. So for that, you need to go for external tool. So you want to know feedback of your post delivery, content, everything. You want to know feedback. So for that, you can use the feedback option. There is one forum Forum is basically kind like, for example, you want to talk about a topic. Like, for example, I want to discuss about the 5G technology. Okay, fifth generation, 5G, you know, now we are using 4G. Next comes 5G. Okay, already 5G started. Next 6G uh, is going to come. I want to discuss about the 5G. What I can do, I can put this question in the forum. And then I will ask the students, okay, you can discuss about this in the forum. And whoever gives a better, whoever participates in a better way in the discussion, I can give you some marks or evaluation based on that. 
then what what happens everyone will start discussing about this uh, then uh, then we can do evaluation or this okay so for that we will use the forum uh, we can use the forum it has a many features it will give you who has put questions who has given answers all that result it will give at the end at the end i can see at the end who has done different discussions on that then we have a glossary then what uh hot spot then we have interactive content uh then we have there is a feature called a journal okay then lesson okay then moodle room forum then uh, peer uh, pearson my lab and mastering link then question series then quiz okay see whatever i am using i will uh, show you quiz i have used extensively this quiz uh we have used very extensively during the corona period mm -hmm. and even now also we are using particularly i am using this quiz to conduct some examination all those kind of things we use the quiz quiz feature is very wonderful in moodle okay you have oh, so serious. much control in the quiz you can create okay, different types of questions in the quiz mcq descriptive questions you can create a uh, yes or no true or false kind of uh, questions you can create a different types of quizzes okay you can create them and you can put them and then a wonderful security measure is also there control in the in this <coughs> in this quiz what kind of the controls like for example i don't want to allow the user to uh, toggle between google uh, between any browser and all and the system so i can control it if i restrict it the user will not be able to i think some questions are there we can pick up the question at the end some people are uh, discussing uh, if you have any question I, I, we request number 14 to please uh, mute themselves as it's disturbing to everyone huh. thank you Okay, so this quiz is a so wonderful that you can, without any restriction, you can just conduct the quiz. Okay, there is no possibility of copying and all. And one more important feature of the quiz is: suppose you have put hundred question and you start the quiz, you can restrict the starting time, ending time, and you can say, uh, like for example, uh, in uh, in two hours, you can join any time uh, to the quiz. and after one hour quiz will automatically close so after one hour the quiz will automatically close and then you can randomize question okay you can randomize the questions in the queues quiz and when you randomize question the question automatically get randomized and you can also randomize the options also suppose for example a b c d options are there you can randomize those options if you randomize option for one person if answer is a for other person it may appear as a c okay so the answers will also randomize even though two students are sitting one next to another they will not be able to give the answer question and answer option option but answer they can tell okay who oh, very which is the capital city of maharashtra answer is mumbai okay he can tell you answer this as a mumbai but he cannot say answer is a answer is b because for the other person uh, the answer may be c or it may be d okay so for that reason uh, that much security that much uh, advanced feature is available in the quiz so we have used this very extensively then there is a scheduler okay this scheduler also we have used so you can provide all your course details everything in the scheduler then the it will automatically inform us also and it will also inform to the students end users then we have a there is one scrum package so this scrum who it's a, a one of the lms uh, tool also okay you can use this along with the moodle so i have not used much but i have uh, learned about it so then you can have you can uh, student folder we can create so student folder when we create the student will be able to deposit his assignments everything in those fol folders so generally we will not do it because uh, we give very few assignments every semester i give four assignments so i will uh, there itself i will check then any surveys and all if you conduct if you want to conduct you can conduct through surveys then there is a you can integrate 
turnitin with the Moodle. Okay, so this turnitin is a uh, is a anti plagiarism software. If your institution has subscription to turnitin, then you can integrate turnitin with the Moodle. So basically, turnitin is used to check whether the student is doing any copy pasting in his uh, reports, in his thesis, in his all those things. Okay. If the student is doing that, it will automatically check and it will give you report. Then we have web work uh, problem set, then wiki, Wikipedia, you know. So Wikipedia also we can integrate in the Moodle. Then there is a workshop option. Then uh, the other, these, these are the main features available in the Moodle. Apart from this, more features are available. I have only shown you few of the features. Then the resources associated with the Moodle. With the Moodle, we have book. Okay, you can create some books and you can put them in the Moodle. We can upload the file. So I am extensively using book file and then URLs. Okay, I am extensively using. Uh, file is, suppose I want to post the notes. I want to post, give some file to them. Okay, suppose for example, I have created some programs. I want to give those programs. I can give them in the So I can give them uh, these resources in the uh, file option. Okay. Then we can create the folders inside. Okay. Then there is a IMS uh, content package. So we can integrate this package. Okay. Integrated uh, uh, management system. Then we can create some labels and all. I will show you those things also. We can create pages in the Moodle. Okay. We can create the pages. Okay, that means some content in one page, some content in, in next page and all. Uh, we can create a, some posters and all. Then uh, recording BN. So this I have not used. I am not much aware about it. And then URL. I have used the uh, URL very extensively. Suppose, for example, I want to give uh, a, a URL of uh, some videos. Okay, YouTube videos. Okay, I want to give you some YouTube video URL. So I can simply uh, copy that URL and I can paste it. I can, I want to give you uh, URL about some university websites, some other external websites. So simply copy those URLs and give it over here and give the description. So students can access those URL and they can access to those content. So these are the basic features that are available. The main basic features, additional features are also available over there. So now, we will look at in more detail which uh, some features which are very very useful to us so attendance activity is one of the very important feature that is available in the moodle why it is important because once you create the attendance student will mark will be able to mark this attendance and the, at the uh, student will also be able to know whether he has attended or not attended and uh, suppose let us assume student is not in the class. Okay, he cannot be able to mark the attendance. How it is possible? Because for every attendance, we can generate a random code. And in the classroom, I can say, okay, this is the random code. You put that random code while marking the attendance. So once they put that random code, they will get the attendance marking link and they can mark that attendance for that day. Okay. <clears throat> this is how we can control the attendance for the student. Uh, so attendance activity model enables a teacher to take attendance during the class and student uh, and students to view their own attendance record. So uh, in our university, attendance is very much strict. Students are supposed to have minimum 75% attendance. And if the student does not attain 75% attendance, the university will restrict them from attending the next semester okay so this feature is uh, the, this thing is there in our university so uh, we do this attendance very uh, stringently we implement this attendance and uh, the the moodle attendance because student will be able to track it okay i need not every time see, show my attendance to the students if i am taking the attendance through the moodle they will be able to access, access this attendance they will be able to see whether i am below 75 above 75 and then they can manage their attendance. So teacher can create multiple sessions and can mark the attendance status as present, absent, late, or excused. So all these four options are available. Okay, present, absent, late, or excused. Excuse means leave. Okay, so these options are available. 
you keep it open. These options are available, so they can market. Then how to create the attendance? Attendance multiple sessions can be created. Okay, so that means uh, you, uh, we need not uh, do uh, create attendance every day. Okay, we can create multiple sessions of attendance. Like you can see here. Uh, 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 suppose my class is on Monday. Okay, uh, Thursday. Okay, two days my class is there. Okay, I can create the attendance session on all these uh, days. Okay, repeat every week and up to when I want my attendance to be generated. So suppose, for example, my course is still uh, four months. Okay, up to May. I can just give this date so automatically it will repeat. Okay, I need not create multiple attendance. So for attendance, you need to create it. Okay, once you create, then every day it will appear. Okay, even we have to give the time also. At what time my attendance is, uh, has to be created. So that is not shown here. I will practically show you when I uh, show you my uh, course. Okay. Uh, then we have the activity and resources, other resources they have shown here. I will not much uh, focus on this. Whatever is important for us, we will look at it. And then there is a about the forums. Okay. Uh, forum is a uh, acronym for online discussion. Okay. So suppose, for example, uh, we will sit together, we will discuss about one topic. Okay. So if we are not in a one place, suppose, for example, in the evening, I want to discuss about, as I told you, Fizee. Okay. I want to launch a discussion. Okay. Then what I will do, I will create a forum and I will send this forum information in the notification to all the students. Today at evening, we will discuss about 5G. So then everyone will join this forum and they will start discussing. So it is a reflection of and analysis via carefully constructed questions. So we will, uh, I will, as a teacher, I will launch some questions. Students will start discussing about that. Okay. Whatever the knowledge they have, they will simply type on that. Okay. And then we will evaluate which is correct, which is wrong. Okay. We, so everyone will come to know about that. You know, whatever the discussion that is happening in the forum. So, but uh, sometimes what happens if students are mischievous, they will put something and all. So there should be proper guidelines for this forum. Okay. Need gu guidelines and facilitation uh, to keep the activity focused on the global objectives of the lesson. Suppose you are discussing about the FISI, some student will start talking about there is a mess problem, there is a food problem, uh, there is a water problem in the department. So you should restrict the students because uh, you have to fruitful discuss. Suppose you have a long forum for one hour, it should be a fruitful discussion. You should tell the student that you should only discuss about whatever the topic we are going to discuss. Then feedback in the forum of a, <clears throat> you can grade them. Whoever participating in the forum, you can grade them. Okay, uh, whether they are uh, A grade uh, participation, B grade participation, all that. So that can help you in uh, doing the uh, in uh, in doing the uh, assessment of the students for assigning marks and all. Uh, like uh, uh, the, the study you can do through forum assignment and Turnitin. Okay, three things you can do. Okay, Ana uh, uh, assessment of the students. So one is the forum through discussion. You can understand who have participated, who have not participated. Uh, you can do the grading. <clears throat> then assignment. When you give the assignment, you can evaluate the assignment and based on the evaluation also you can do the grading. And then Turnitin will help you in understanding whether they have put the copied content or it's a, their own original uh, document. Okay, so that you can do through the uh, Turnitin. That is the anti-plagiarism software. So these tools are useful for analysis, synthesis and application of course content through responses and interaction and the students could post their own answers and then they become the basis for an online discussion okay so suppose i give an assignment they will write that assignment and then turn it in will check the assignment and it gives you feedback whether they have copied or they have written these assignment on their own okay so in this we can use uh, group discussion, group assignments. Suppose 
you want to ask the students to do some project assignment in a group okay so each one will divide the task and then they will do in the group so for that the tools required are wiki forum assignment and turnitin these four things are required so <clears throat> When you have a small groups you created and uh, you want to find the solution among these uh, small groups for a, any specific problem and then you want them to demonstrate once they find out the solution you want them to demonstrate their understanding through some sort of the digital presentation then you can go for group assignment for that you need to use wiki forum assignment and turn it in then we know debates suppose you want to conduct the debates through the moodle okay you can create the debates through the moodle so for that what all tools you need to use you need to use wiki forum voice activity video upload through assignment or forum so these all tools you need to use them so when we want to create a debate debate is a teamwork basically okay so there will be like for example we want to divide the entire classroom into two groups one is uh, talking uh, in favor of the uh, subject another team will be talking against the subject okay then the the this uh, team discussion happens okay a controversial topic or article is chosen over here in the structured forum each talking a taking a position okay each student will take a position some will talk in favor of the subject some will talk against the uh, subject then uh, promotes uh, basically this debate promotes and analysis uh, promotes analysis and synthesis that means when you are debating you will do a lot of analysis okay a lot of discussion you are doing you are talking in favor of the subject you are talking against the subject okay so these kind of discussions are happening in the debate okay so a kind of a discussion happens over here <coughs> lot of discussions are going to happen over here next uh, then self checking activity uh, are there self checking check activities are there a quiz quiz is a individual activity okay it is not a uh, means people will participate in group but individually everyone has to do it okay so here uh, but you can ask four students to sit together and uh, attend the quiz that is possible but quiz is generally conducted individually because we are going to randomize the question everyone has to answer in the quiz okay so quiz is very important feature in the moodle then there is a another feature called as question and answer forum it's a single activity why because uh, we will launch some questions so whatever you know as a participant as a student you will give some you will participate and give some answers and then evaluation happens based on the answers that you have provided over there then the assignment where the student can get participation marks for completing assignments okay assignment uh, again you can set the deadline and after evaluating you can give the assignment marks okay assignment is also a individual activity okay so then uh, so this entire thing is uh, they have shown like this they have shown how you can uh, do all these settings now we will move on uh, you can even restrict the access to this okay you can create a restriction to access uh, action to every activity okay you can create a restriction okay then uh, the group okay group signed grouping so how to create the groups okay user groups there is a group feature that we have already seen here groups features are available here so we can create a group use uh, use groups in the moodle to assign a particular activity or all course activities to a group of the students like for example generally what we do we will divide one task into so many uh, uh, different tasks and each group will assign the task so those grouping can be created in the moodle group can be especially useful for activities where student interact with one another okay with forums wikis and database 
students in the group same group can post and reply only to each other see when i created suppose five groups each group can interact within their group only okay if they are interacting they can interact within their group so suppose some activities we have given some competitions we have given they can themselves interact and they can build the activity okay so which will not be aware to other groups so each group member always works in their own group but you can control whether or not they can see contributions of the numbers of other groups so this <coughs> inter group activity is you can control anyway then uh, grouping are a collection of uh, uh, you collection of groups and you can assign activities to specific groups as needed so a group activity you can anyway you can control over there okay so then assignment here one assignment uh, feature is shown so separate students by group you can assign create the assignments group wise assignments you can create or you can create the common assignment so nt plagiarism software that is turning in uh, can be uh, given so uh, we will not uh, look at all this you can even put the audio files in the assignment and all okay i will show you how to create all this in the later stage add on activities so uh, more about the assignment description is given over here <coughs> the assignment activity uh, moodle enables the teacher to communicate tasks collect work and provide grades and feedback so you can through assignment you can give some activity to the student you can uh, get the grading okay you can uh, 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 grade the students activities and then you can take the information uh, grading feedback everything to the assignments then students can submit any digital content okay so student can submit anything in the assignment okay <clears throat> so like for example you can ask the students to uh, provide the files you can ask them to provide any kind of information through the assignment then uh, students can submit any digital content as i told you then uh, students can submit uh, so, so, like for example spreadsheet images audio and video clips alternative to in addition to the assign uh, assignment may require students to type sometime even we can ask the students to type also as a assignment okay generally what i will do i will ask the students to write the assignment and then take the scan copy and then post it why because my assignment contains lot of diagrams lot of equations and all so typing them will be a very difficult suppose you are uh, a hindi marathi teacher language teacher or any social science and all you your uh, assignments does not have any equations does not have any drawings and all you can ask them to type they will type it okay they will type in the assignment section itself and then you can do the assessment so it's very easy for you then uh, uh, so many things you can create when uh, reviewing assignments teachers can leave feedback comments and upload files such as marked up student submissions documents with comments or spoken audio feedback even these things are also possible in the assignment uh, let me go to the next see here how it looks assignment assignment you can create a starting date from tomorrow you want uh, the student to submit assignment like that you can create starting date ending date you can create so due date you can create after the submission of the uh, after the due date you can restrict submission of the assignment whether they can submit or not so once the assignments are submitted it will show you who uh, submitted within time who submitted late and all all that are possible here Uh, then after that you can do the grading also i will show you this also how to grade the assignment okay see these all interfaces you can uh, do as per your requirement okay i will show you my how we have done for our uh, this thing for our uh, moodle assignments quiz you can conduct the quiz okay so multi choice quiz there are basically many types of quizzes okay 
so generally we conduct mcq type of quizzes multi uh, mcq uh, questions uh, <coughs> so there are different uh, settings are there okay during the attempt uh, the reviewing during during the attempt but that means once he has uh, given whether he the okay so all options so many options are there in the uh, quiz i will show you live then you will understand uh, <clears throat> so how to create the quiz that is shown here uh, so what all possible things are there what i will do better i will show you live only then you will be able to understand it okay so slides are moving hope i i think slides are moving now let me check hope my slides are moving okay it is moving okay so this is the screen for uh, quiz then uh, how to add the questions in the quiz uh, so i will show you all this okay we can manually add or we can upload from the typed file okay that is also possible i will show you all this later and then what type of uh, questions you have see these are different types of questions that we can create in the quiz okay so multi choice questions mcq what have we say multi choice questions then uh, true or false type then matching okay here one side we will give four questions and another side four answers and uh, match matching type questions then uh, we have the uh, short answers okay short answer suppose for example i ask how many districts are there in the maharashtra state so districts are Uh, restricted number we need to give numbers so that comes under the numerical suppose i want to know uh, what was the old name of mumbai okay short answer it was bombay earlier mumbai was called as bombay so we can ask as a short answer okay suppose number i want to how many districts are there in the maharashtra state it's a number okay 50 districts 40 districts whatever we have we need to give the number so numerical type okay then essay write an essay on ajanta and elora okay essay type okay so they will type essay on that calculated suppose i will give you some values some equation i will give you and uh, you calculate and give the answer calculated type then calculated multi choice okay uh, after doing calculation i will give you multi choice you have to select one among them calculated simple these i have not explored i have explored only multi choice true or false matching short answer numerical okay this i have explored but other than that there are so many other options drag and drop in text okay drag and drop markers drag and drop in, into image embed embedded answers okay random short answer matching these are the different types of questions you can create in the quiz okay all type of options are there for you adding quiz question next aha uh -huh. so now we will talk about the cloud <clears throat> see if you are using a small uh, uh, company a small institution it is very difficult to maintain the server very difficult to maintain a administrator and all then you can go for cloud based moodle see cloud based moodle is not free why it is not free it is because you are going to use a cloud and the cloud rent you need to pay cloud is what not the our cloud normal cloud it is the digital cloud okay uh, this digital cloud is being offered by so many companies like amazon is there then uh, so many companies are there okay uh, microsoft cloud is there then uh, yahoo cloud is there so many clouds are there uh you can hire the cloud google cloud itself is there okay you need to hire the cloud hire the cloud means it is kind of a rent some area they will give you so you need to rent that area okay uh 
okay memory space and through internet you can access it why cloud is better we will discuss about it like for example cloud storage platform suppose you want to hire 5 gb cloud okay for 5 gb the monthly rent is 1.99 dollars okay 1.99 dollars means how much it comes to 1.99 dollars 2 dollars okay 2 dollars means around 80 rupees means uh, 80 into 2 around 160 rupees per month you need to pay okay whereas if you increase more space see 50 gb 5 gb is very less uh, actually 5 gb is free 5 gb is free on one drive okay 15 gb is free on google drive if you are using only 15 gb it is free okay but 15 gb is very very insufficient for any moodle uh, usage for any institution okay suppose you want to hire 100 gb then it costs you two dollars in google drive and uh, one two dollars in uh, for 50 gb in one drive okay. two dollars means 160 rupees per month you need to pay okay then suppose even if you feel that the 100 gb is not sufficient then you can go for one terabyte so this costing was at that time 19 uh, no, 2017 now 100 percent costing must have been increased so one terabyte of space in google space it requires 10 dollars around 800 rupees per month okay similarly one tb in the one drive it requires seven dollars per month in one drive so option is left to you you can take any one uh, i better uh, suggest you if you are a small college you can go for 100 gb 100 gb is enough if college is bigger or a university you have to go for one terabyte one tb okay one tb is equal to 1000 uh, the gb okay you can go for that much uh, space that is sufficient so uh, here one cartoon is uh, put a child besides child i think everyone know about this fellow he is barack obama he was a president uh, around uh, seven eight years back okay so one child uh, sitting to him he says dad says you are spying on us online okay but uh, Barack Obama says he is not your dad. That means oh, whoever is said he is not your dad. Uh, basically, the meaning of this uh, cartoon is, meaning of this picture is that uh, you people may ask. Okay, definitely one of you is um, must have asked during question of question and answer session that when you go for a cloud-based uh, Moodle, see, we are sharing our course content, we are sharing our student information, we are sharing uh, everything on the cloud okay and uh, anyone can have a question sir when we are sharing all these information what is the uh, confidentiality anybody can take that data anybody can use our confidential information because even we are sharing their email addresses we are sharing their phone numbers okay more details we are going to share when we are using cloud based moodle okay so somebody may have that question uh then they say no we are not this is confidential we are not going to use that data for any purpose and it will remain confidential why because they are going to have this very safe a high encrypt encryption is provided okay encryption okay very safe and secure because these data are encrypted nobody can uh, take this data without uh, our knowledge nobody can uh, take out this data unless we share the data with anybody okay it's highly safe and secure it is a encrypted data that's why it is very safe you need not worry about that okay so how traditionally data exchange happens traditional way to exchange the data and uh, file uh, this is how we are, we are doing through emails and all okay so that is also safe when uh, emails are being sent it is safely being sent. Nobody can leak that data. Okay. It is impossible to leak the data. Why? Because they are all encrypted data. They are encrypted means they are packaged. Okay. With security, high secure packaging is done 
so nobody can access that data no, nobody can interfere in that data so it is highly safe and secure so then uh, cloud means what cloud is like uh, one single point where we are hiring a small space okay we are only taking a small space so many companies may be using that cloud okay it is a central repository and uh, the purpose is uh, like a, like for example uh, you your hostel is there okay or a big complex is there where many students from different colleges come and stay that is a cloud okay we don't know which college student where simply they will book the hostel room and they will come and stay over there okay so that is a cloud likewise we will hire some cloud area we will store our data we will store our file we will use that for our moodle purpose okay and we can uh, whenever we complete our task we can even leave that cloud we can join some other cloud also that is possible only thing is we have to take the backup and we have to upload that backup in some other cloud <laughs> so this cloud data is exchanged to your uh, desktop it uh, this data storage and uh, retrieval happens through laptop mobile tablets anything okay you can do this cloud exchange through any media then adding external sources i am talking about there is a label option we can use this label option for adding the data or retrieving the data from the storages then uh, uh, even we we can add the youtube okay we can give the link or we can add the youtube video itself in this uh, area so how to add and all they have shown we will this is the link option okay so here the label text we have to put the label text information and here we need to create the link for that that i will show you later so see here one video is being added okay so this video is added and then uh, they have given information about that okay so this is another video uh, then how to add this and all they have given the link here i will show you how to add this how to give this link and all that i am going to show you in the uh, in my live session adding external resources so youtube is a external re resource it is not part of the moodle okay moodle content so external resources they are adding over here so then uh, uh, like office 365 i told you ms office if you are using then you can add that also as a part of this content okay you can add that as a part of this content so uh, we call that as a external resource so here you can see they have they have added a external resource office 365 account they have added so they can link uh, login here and then they can access those content you can see in the moodle itself the word is coming over here okay word is coming over here so there are other open source tools also uh, i think in the during this course you are going to learn generally i prefer using the open source tools so you may be using ms office but from last so many years i am not using ms office okay i am using the libre office libre office my ppt it is what I, you can see it is through libre office okay it is uh, ms office compatible but this is the libre office okay i am not using ms office libre office has all the features powerpoint it has word powerpoint it has uh, all those features everything okay uh, excel okay but names are different there names are different not word excel and all the names are different but features are same okay so you can see same thing whatever i am using okay so i am using open source and you people also should learn them why because see ms office if you go for a license one it costs very high its cost is somewhere around uh, uh, 16000 20000 i don't know current cost of the ms office it is very expensive and uh, most of the people are using cracked version okay why to use cracked version why we should uh, as a teacher we should be ethically correct okay if we if we are ethically correct then we can teach something good to the students okay so if we ourselves are doing unethical things then it is very bad got it no so for that reason we should go for the legal software so this way 
even uh, we can put the LibreOffice, we can uh, embed LibreOffice. Here they have embedded Office 365. We can embed the LibreOffice also. Okay, we can embed it here in this. So next, so after embedding, we can do sharing. Okay, so here uh, once we embed, we can uh, go for the share uh, like this. So how to embed all those details they have given. We will see more about this. So we will see the essential features. So feedback of an activity. Uh, that feedback, feedback feature is shown here. A feedback activity module enables a teacher to create a custom survey of collecting the feedback. See, after you have done one good lecture, okay, for three hours, two hours, okay, you can create a feedback. The students can give their feedback. So this feedback basically helps us in improving my course content, in improving my delivery of lecture, okay. <clears throat> So you can create feedback in different way, multiple choice, yes or no, text feedback. All this you can give. Okay, you can create some question. Okay, whether my uh, talk time was precise, whether my delivery of content was good, uh, whether my uh, way of delivery is good, whether my language is good or not. You can give multiple choice. Very good, good, uh, better, uh, poor, all that. Okay. So this way you can give multiple choice or true or false. Next time, whether you want, if you get a chance to hear me, you want to hear or no, yes or no, okay? Or you want to improvement, what improvement you suggest? Let them ask, uh, you can ask them to type some content, okay? Like this, uh, this feedback can be uh, taken. Feedback responses may be anonymous if desired or anonymous means uh, they need not give their details, their name, all those things. They need not give. Okay, anonymous feedback we call. So likewise, you can have different uh, restrictions. So if anonymous means, uh, suppose I confidentially want to give, if you want to, I uh, without spelling your name, without giving your name, you want to give your feedback. So I can take an anonymous feedback there. I will not be knowing who has given the feedback. Teacher will not be knowing. Okay. So this way, feedbacks are given. Uh, particularly, we will take student feedback on uh, teachers, student be feedback on course. We will take anonymously. Why? Because uh, later, I, uh, the teacher should not do any targeting. Okay. So for that reason, we can take anonymous. Anonymous feedback will be correct. Why? Because the students will give correct feedback on the teacher and all. Uh, so this is uh, how we can... Uh, feedback okay so all this they have given you uh you can just uh, go through it uh this uh, moodle uh, demos are there moodle uh, courses are there you can freely join them you can learn them free of cost everything is free here okay you can learn them if you really want to use as an individual teacher also you can join a common moodle and you can run it okay there is a restriction for that okay if your institution don't want to take the moodle and but you are interested you can join the Moodle okay, as a teacher and you can uh, add your students to that. There is a restricted version. Uh, some 50 students you can add in one session and you can add them and you can use the Moodle. That is also possible. So this uh, choice activity Moodle enables the teachers to ask single question and offer a selection uh, of possible responses. Choice uh, result may be published after students have answered after a certain date or uh, not at all. You can even publish this result of your feedback. Suppose a teacher got a very good feedback. He want to publish. He want to show his feedback. So he can publish. Okay. So students be see results. Maybe used as a uh, quick poll or simultaneous thinking about a topic. Polling also you can do here. Okay. You launch a subject, whether you, uh, you are ready for a field work. Okay. Field work or excursion or uh, industry visit. You can give some four to five options. Okay. Then student will give a poll when they want to select. And based on the majority, you can uh, go. Suppose student want an industrial visit then you can go for that, like that. You can conduct a poll, a quick test understanding if it's, uh, to facilitate student decision making, for example, allowing students to vote, like that. You can go for these kind of choices. So 
so this is how it is done all this uh, more about the feedback questionnaires and all see you will get the real experience when if you use it okay then only you will be able to get it uh, and if i want you uh, want me to train on this uh, it requires really a longer sessions okay but it's only interest see i never learned moodle okay i started using i got the interest in that and i started using more and more i learned more and more things and because of that i am able to uh, give a talk on this okay so i never took any training on the moodle but of course i have saw video clips all those things no no formal training okay it's all personal interest if i want to improve myself if i want to use a uh, lms uh, which is a very world standard lms this is a very standard lms okay it is being used across the world by many people okay so if you have if you are willing you can freely start doing that today itself so survey also we can conduct okay survey activity uh, the survey activity moodle provides a number of verified survey instructions instruments that have been uh, found useful in assessing and simultaneously learning in online environment so a teacher can use these to gather data from their students that will help them learn about their class and reflect their own teaching so note that these survey tools are pre populated with questions see here also you need to put the question and you can conduct the survey survey and uh, feedback are quite similar okay there is some basic difference but they are quite similar like this here one survey is created okay so the question what they have created the purpose of this question is to help understand how well the online delivery of this unit enabled you to learn okay each couple of uh, each couple of 24 statements below ask you to compare your preferred that is ideal and actual experience in this unit okay some questions they have put and they have put four or five uh, i think six options okay not it answered almost never seldom sometimes other almost always like this some options are given okay you can create a survey then turn it in i was talking about the anti plagiarism software we can integrate anti plagiarism software with this moodle okay very much you can integrate that will help you in uh, uh, understanding whether any content of your uh, uh, students have copied or they have written on their own all those things you can understand using this option uh, then uh, okay see moodle is available both on android application as well as ios okay so it's a very standard one even in the ios this moodle is available okay so anybody having ios device they can use students they can use this moodle and in apple system also as a administrator or as a teacher you can create the course you can use the course uh, uh, for the moodle this is a moodle symbol anyway you can use in the desktop you can use in the system laptops you can use in the uh, in the tablets you can use in the mobile phones so these are some of the resources of the moodle see first of all moodle uh, dot org where you can get the moodle website then uh, any news about the moodle you can go to moodle news dot the uh, slides are available at the slideshare.net uh, this is the link given uh, given you can go there then then uh, downson tier okay so some uh, website also address is given you can go there okay these are the resources so okay so they want course teacher okay so we will not take up the questions before the questions i will uh, this is my contact detail answer 15 minutes or 20 minutes i will just go through my live moodle and then we will take up the questions hope i am having uh, some more time for that so then you can do some uh, huh, remaining time you can do some activity by going to moodle website okay i will give you some four to five activities you can do those activities by going to the moodle website
So otherwise, if you have any question till now, we can take the question and then I will go to my Moodle website. Okay, so we will take up the question later. Uh, let me go to Moodle website. Uh, first, I will open my Moodle website and then I will uh, share the screen. Let me open it. Okay, let me share this opening entirely. I will show you. Okay, my screen is available now. Is my screen available? Somebody can yes, just... Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. So now uh, I am, I have shown you this screen in my presentation. Now I will log in here. My username is RSAGD. I am, uh, as a teacher, I am logging, uh, log, logging in here. I can only show you as a teacher, uh, uh, administrator. I am not an administrator. I am only teacher. I will show you. I will log in. See, uh, Invalid password. Okay. Okay. So this is my login. Uh, so actually, I have many courses. Uh, so I need to go for these courses. Two courses it is showing digital image processing and dip lab okay two courses it is showing so first i what i will do here i can check in progress future course past course okay or if i want to show all i will show you all see these many are my courses okay all courses till now what i have taught through moodle these are the courses I have taught different computer graphics and visualization, digital image processing, system software, okay, mini project, lab, so many things I have taught. Okay, so all these courses are visible. Since uh, it will be confusing, what generally what we will do, I will we will generally hide it in progress. Current courses, okay. Actually, these are ended just now. Recently, current courses I am showing you. So now I will go to my course that is digital image processing that I have taught recently. Okay, I have taught taught recently that I am going to show. In this uh, right top corner, you can see here right top corner. You can see edit mode is there. Now edit mode is off. So you are the user. Your details are shown here. Uh, I am the owner of this pet. <laughs> Somebody, please uh, mute yourself. Okay. Uh -huh. So here, user details is available. Okay. So my profile, my gray uh, cal calendar message. So we can create this. Okay. I see grading, grades, calendar, all that messages. Okay. Uh, reports, everything. We can do all those settings over here. So let me go to calendar. So this, my calendar appears. See, it is showing internal assessment one assign, assessment is due. Internal assessment assessment is due. What I will do? I will go to in January. No much things are there. I will go to December. December also uh, activities. I think I have deleted most of the activities. November. I think I have deleted most of the activities. Every class activity was there. I think it got deleted. <coughs> no issue. Uh, this is how once we calendar create our activities, it will appear in the calendar. Okay, there will be you can see those things in the calendar. Now we will I will go back. Profile. 
this is my profile you can edit your profile you can put your photograph uh, that i have already put it you can edit all the details okay so so many things are there related to me all that details we can put it here please mute yourself give me one just half minute break and have some water and then i will continue a half minute break Okay, let us resume our discussion. So this is okay. I have a profile. I have put address, everything. So this profile, students can be some content. The students can be able to access. Will be able to see, and even we can link this profile for university website. Okay, and uh, the anybody can see what courses I am taking. If we link, we have not done that linking. but we can link to our university website and anybody can access our detail whichever we want to show them okay whichever we don't want to show them then they cannot be able to access so now i will come to home uh, uh, okay i will come to my course i will come to my digital image processing course Sorry for that. There was some, I think, network issue. Let me again share. Okay. So let me come back to my course, digital image processing. I was talking about. So okay. here i told you edit mode see now if edit mode is now disabled okay so i cannot edit any course any content in this course so collapse all see four units i told you no we have created uh, actually five blocks there one is called as general then unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 Digital image processing four units are there for each unit. I have created like this. Okay, uh, then uh, expand all means it will expand. Okay, like this. In general, what I have uh, in unit one, what I have in unit two, what I have in unit three, what I have in unit four, what I have. All this. Okay. Uh, so if I want to edit, I have to simply go for edit mode. I have to click here. It will look blue. I can edit. Okay. so now i uh, i will if required i will show you edit otherwise i will keep it disabled only so i will show you a uh, few things here See, what i have put first thing i in uh, general generally i will put the syllabus i don't know whether i have put the syllabus so here i have not put the syllabus i have created a forum announcements all the announcements i will put here and if i want i can even interact with them that is possible then uh, uh majorly i have put the assignments okay assignments assignments one is the attendance as assignment i have created okay then i have created assignment 1 2 3 three assignments then internal assessment mark that also i have created as a assignment see based on these assignments i will do evaluation 
okay my 40 marks internal assessments i will conduct two tests internal assessment tests two tests i have given three assignments written writing assignments and then i have given one attendance also five marks i will cover based on the attendance five marks for each uh, assignment then each test 10 10 marks 20 marks total 40 marks okay let me show you uh, unit uh, our uh, units see in the units uh, unit 1 i have shared them with the my uh, course notes as well as ppts second unit course notes and ppts third unit course notes and ppts fourth unit course notes and ppts now what i will do i will give you some uh, i will uh, create some assignments okay i will create some activities and i will show you and same thing you can do it as a practice okay another 15 minutes i will create i will show you and next half an hour you can do those activities okay so first i will go to moodle dot org it is opening okay still opening otherwise you can see some as a activity you can see some uh, uh, videos and all okay so first thing you need to create a login okay you need to create a login my login it is in our cloud okay this is the different this is the uh general login i i think i have created but still i will try to uh create one okay so create with a username generally you need to give institutional user id preferred see by continuing this i will continue okay some instruction that will give you uh i will continue it Okay, Moodle open source learning. That's all. My user is created. Now I will log in with that user. But I think password, let me check. One mail must have come to my email address. Let me check that. Yes. So you will receive a mail to your email address. Then I authenticate. I will authenticate. There it will uh, be to uh, let me go that. I think I received this link. I am opening that link. I will copy that link address and I will paste it here. Ah, okay. Registration is confirmed, it is saying. So I will go to courses. So there are so many courses, I think. Oh, there are some open source courses are also available, but not uh, long. You please. Okay, okay. So, create a new account. It better you go to create a new account at the bottom. What is the age? It will ask you give your age, country, proceeds, proceed.
so network is uh, very slow here so it will ask so many things you need to simply say agree agree next parallelly you people also can try this so his username i will give my username some password then i need to do my email again my first name last name city and these are not mandatory i can okay anyway india other fields i don't want create my account oh it says rscd is already there so i need to check it is there means i have to only go and log in okay i have logged in so here after login you can uh, download moodle okay you can discover moodle you can know more about the moodle you can also download plugins i told you so many plugins are available looking for your moodle site yes i will just go uh -huh. if your institution has a moodle site you can go for a looking for your moodle site get moodle you can go for a get moodle get moodle so they have their own moodle you can start with a trial get a uh, Mm, expert assistance all those things are there okay see uh, even chat also came okay they will uh, help you okay to set up your moodle you can just go through this you can create your own account and explore okay and log in try to log in to the moodle got it now so i want to get the moodle uh, see so many things are there i want to get get moodle consultancy service and paid support training and certificate training or certification i want to get moodle app for mobile learning for my existing moodle site help logging in forgotten password so many options are there okay so you can select any one and you can go further <clears throat> okay i need a custom solution i need an off the shelf solution all this if your institution you want to have a moodle on your institution you can uh, come here otherwise you can directly uh, go go to that okay so here different things are there you can uh, try so what you do uh, this moodle uh, uh, is free for individual users you can just explore you check how you can get it because i have not explored i have used my institutional moodle i will show more about this one or two activities i will try to show you what i will show you i will uh, show you the assignment okay how to create an assignment so i have already created let me go to edit mode i will show you this assignment very simple it is and quiz i will try to show you okay i have come to edit mode i will open this assignment
ah so before that uh, okay assignment uh here setting ah so we have to give a name to assignment if any description is required you can give the description then uh, activity instructions any file to be added see here assignment file you need to add here okay you need to add what assignment you are giving you can give the questions here itself in the instructions here itself you can give the questions and you need to add a file assignment file and then uh, uh, allow submission from which date starting date of assignment and due date okay then cut off date and reminder all that is there so you can give those dates and then uh, how many files you want to allow the users to submit i have set it by default it will be 10 i have not disturbed that so what type of file size 2m 2gb maximum file size all that then there are many options okay many options these are all not actually required you can just simply neglect them and then you have to save and return to the course so this is how we can create the assignment uh, <clears throat> what we will do we will get on quiz also before that i will show you see here uh, for this course we have already added the participants so that participant list is available here see these are the students 34 students are there for uh, 33 plus myself 34 these are the number of participants for this course okay so let me go for all 20 let me go to show all it will show you this many participants then uh, the grade book i told you we have created the grade book so for 40 marks i have assessed let me show you that grade book see this is showing maximum i think something is not added uh, uh -huh. assignment one assignment uh, uh internal assessment one assignment one assignment two assignment three internal assessment two attendance and this is total marks if we are conducting these activities uh, individually but in the grade book it has some now this is my uh final marks to the students that i have given okay automatically it comes simply just print this download this or print this and you can submit this this is enough okay you can sort them based on their registration number here you can see their username that is their username is their registration number or based on the name or email address you can sort and you can give the you can uh, uh, submit this okay so how we are going to see whatever assignment i have created there that only it is coming here got it now <coughs> this is how we can do it let me go back uh this is uh, we can generate the reports for that so many reports are there log report log activity uh, when a user logged in when all this log details are available competency breakdown okay let me show you competency breakdown each individual's competency we can see i have not done actually the competency in detail it is not showing so we can even check the competency more options are available here question bank content bank course completion badges competency filter course reuse then uh, setting options are there for this course we can do some settings okay when course started when it is going to end okay start date end date course name course code all that we can provide here got it now so many details are there actually this is a very big software very much detailed things are there only thing is when you start using you will be able to know more about that okay so one small thing i will just show you how to create a quiz okay so i will go to edit mode without editing mode we cannot create it so just come down come down down okay add an activity where you want to add so what i will do i will add this activity in last unit unit number four so here i will say add a activity so what i will do i will select a quiz so here all these many activities are there i have shown you know so many things assignment attendance book chat choice database external tool feedback file folder all this we have already i have shown you okay so 
so many things are there. Quiz is here. Okay. So easy way, you can just type here Q U I Z. So quiz Q U I Z. So quiz has appeared here. So I will select quiz. There is one more H5P that is different. Okay. Um, so I will just write uh, Q U I quiz one. Okay. So uh, so here you can set the timing when it starts, when quiz opens, and when quiz ends. So currently I will not set it. Then you can give the grading details. Okay, whether it, you want a grading for that. Okay. Uh, how many times, how many attempts you want to allow? One attempt, two attempt. Okay. So usually we will go for a one attempt only. Here, save browser mode. Layout, what way you want to look, appear. Each question on one page. Uh, every two questions on one page. Navigation method. Pre-navigation, sequential navigation means, pre-navigation means directly I can go to any question. Sequential navigation, one after the other. One, two, three, like that. Okay, so by default, something will be there. You need not change it. Question behavior, shuffle within questions. Shuffle within questions. Okay, if you say yes, it will shuffle the question options. How question behavior, adopt mode, deferred feedback, adaptive or immediate feedback. Okay, adaptive mode we will go for. Immediate feedback means after immediate answer question, answer it will show true or correct or not or wrong answer, whatever, all that. <laughs> then review options, see here, so many review options. During the attempt, immediately after the attempt, later while quiz is still open, after the quiz is closed. So many attempt options are available here. Appearance. So many options are there. You need not do all this. By default, it will have something. If you want to change, then you can change. Appearance. Show small image, large image for the questions. Then uh, decimal place. If you are going for a grading, decimal place for marks, all that. Uh, I will come to this. Safe exam browser. If I say yes, okay. Uh, if I say yes, then what it does, it will not allow tab to operate. Okay, if you operate, if you press tab, nothing happens unless quiz completes. So once the student enter into quiz, that's all. He has to completely give all the answer when he submit. Then only he will be able to press the tab to open any other. Only option left to him is he has to restart the computer. In between, he cannot leave the quiz. Okay, he has to restart. Restart means entire thing will go away. He cannot again log in into quiz. Okay, so this is the option available, safe browser option. So this will restrict the student to toggle and uh, search in the Google any question answer for the question. Very good option. Okay, save browser. So, uh, these are so many options under the save browser. You can just, uh, password also, we can set. Once, even after the completion of quiz, student will not be able to uh, quit. We will set a password. Okay, for example, some password we give. Then, after exam, we can share this password. Once we came to know that time is over, once the time is over, let us assume still student is attempting is automatically it will close automatically it will close it will not allow the student to give any answer so it's a wonderful okay so many beautiful options are available you can just explore that and once that is done then we can save and return okay so now quiz one is created it is creating okay here we have created a quiz now we have to add questions to the quiz click here Okay, edit setting. Uh, uh, okay, so we will uh, setting means it will go back to that. Now we will go to quiz one. Now we need to add the questions. Add question. Okay, so question two options are there. We can directly upload questions. Maximum marks we can set here. Suppose for example, 50 marks for this question. We can save. Okay, here we can add the questions add the question add a new question 
question for question bank suppose you have already prepared the questions Hello? there is a template for that ha tumhi okay. kay jodlo hote sir mage yes so there is a template for the questions you can edit the questions in that template okay uh you can add or you can create a new question really you can type ma here i told you uh, there are uh, so many types of multi choice role ji khadche kai lokanchi ki tumhi presentation dile mhanun role number 29 please uh? mute yourself role number 29 please mute yourself ab bagha tyacha madhe te tasla format asel tumcha kade asel asel ho ho anun ghe sir रोल नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन प्लीज म्यूट योर सेल्फ ओके हो पाइम ऑडिबल दीज आर दाइसिस अवेलेबल ओके आई हैव शोन यू दिस ड्यूरिंग माई प्रेजेंटेशन ऑल्सो यू कैन सेलेक्ट एनी वन ओके सपोज आई विल गो फॉर मल्टीपल मल्टी चॉइस ओके ha so question name we have to give some question what i will do question number 1 q1 okay so here text we need to type okay which is the capital city of maharashtra okay so this is the question here we need to uh, depart marks how much marks you want to give one okay Uh, feedback if you want to give any feedback okay so you it is in the western part something like that okay some clue you want to give so i don't want to give any clue so uh, one or multiple answers so sometime somebody will uh, uh, there for one question there will be two answers okay so you can uh, give that uh, multiple answers allowed no i want to give only one answer okay so how you want to do numbering a b c 1 2 3 all this uh, let it be default a b c So here i will give you uh, give different choice this is pune mumbai bangalore you can give any any number of choice huh? i will give only four you can give even more also choice one oh sorry the feedback it came in the feedback choice two bangalore choice 3 i will add mumbai then choice 4 of the four choices there are still choices we can add or we a uh, fifth choice we can add otherwise no two two choices are also possible three choices are also possible ten choices are also possible If you want to add more, you have to just say uh, blank three more choices. It will keep on adding. Okay, so you can add them. I don't need. So uh, I will save. I will save this. Uh, here grading. Ah, so I have to give how much grading I want. Okay, one choice I have to give the correct answer. No. Ah, so here I will say Mumbai hundred percent answer. Okay. so this is how i will now i will save it okay save changes save and continue that's all my uh, quiz is created now now i can go back to my course so likewise you need to add all the questions so when i go to quiz okay so anyone now i can check how it appears for the student switch role there is a switch role option if i go to switch role uh how it appears to the student let me check see it looks like this so i will go to uh, the quiz okay so it is not at the time is not at started it seems it is not uh okay i have set the save browser mode that's why it is asking the student to download save browser uh exam so you ask okay so this you can explore uh because of time paucity i cannot be able to discuss all this so 
like this there are plenty plenty of features available in the moodle okay so now i will uh, be able to take questions session any questions if you have please yes, ask sir, the uh, question sir i have three we questions we can be able to take few questions sir i have yeah. three questions i hope they are very small uh, sir the first yeah, question no, is no. Uh, thank you sir sir the first question is why to embed office docs sir i know i think i know about embedding uh, youtube videos but i don't understand why i need to embed office docs i mean what is the use of embedding office docs sir yes yes is sometime people feel that uh, i have to uh, you, they are working in the moodle okay they want to create a doc then they have to switch over come back all that so if you embed here itself then uh, like for example you want to the students to edit their uh, assignment okay so if yes, we sir. embed here only they need not go to office or they need not load on their system If it is embedded here only, the students can type there itself. Suppose, example, my questions, then I cannot type even equation. It is also there. That option is. I want my document to type in MS Office or LibreOffice. Then, if I embed student on their PC, they can directly type here. Okay, type and save it. Document will be available in that. Format only. Dot doc 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 x. So it will be a kind of uniformity maintained. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, in quiz, uh, can yes. I just make and share the link on WhatsApp like uh, we usually do on uh, Google? Uh, sorry, what is uh, the name? Google Drive. Google uh, this thing. Or, or sir, I need to uh, go through yes, the formal uh, and long uh, way. No, no, uh, no, like creating courses and adding students to the that courses, registering them, and all that things, sir. You need to go to Moodle, and then you have to create everything. Okay. Yes, sir. You want to share with the students in WhatsApp. No, yes, once sir. Yes. Students have to log in into Moodle. Once they log in, everything is available inside the Moodle. Mm -hmm. and the notification goes suppose you put any assignment notification goes by mail yes sir ha ah, to their mail id notification goes email goes okay sir that feature is available okay. yeah sir my last question is uh, sir uh, is there turnitin software available in moodle so it requires my personal turnitin uh, id i mean provided by my institution or it has in built feature of turnitin sir uh moodle if you if you create your own server then uh you, it is up to you people okay whether you use in personal id it is up to you people but uh, if you want to use the general moodle I, the uh, institutional email id i think i have not uh, tried i think you need a institutional email id for that You want to use Moodle server? Okay, sir. Moodle gives uh, uh, option to individual user to use it. If if you want to create your own Moodle for your students, you can use it. There is a but uh, for that I think institutional email ID is required. It seems, but try and check because server was with us. I never tried that. You can try and check. Yes. Any other question? Hello, yes, sir. Role number three, Amit questions. Sarkar. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm uh, yeah, Dr. Amit Sarkar. What is the role of administrator in Moodle? Yeah. Administrator role is very important because he himself creates. Administrator creates everything in the Moodle. Okay, your course, your user, your teachers, uh, all setting. Okay, everything administrator only. so administrator role is very very important entire thank you sir structure of the moodle is created by administrator teacher will only do course delivery 
attendance, all these activities, course related activities, but entire thing is created by administrator. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Welcome. Excuse me, sir. Okay, if there are no other uh, questions. Yes. This is number 12, sir. Uh, we Ours is a very small unit and we are already using Google Classroom with us. So can Google Classroom yes. is called as LMS? Yes. yes, it is also LMS, uh, but uh, it is like a, in front of a elephant. It uh, is like a yes. mice. Uh, mm -hmm. Google Classroom yes, I got it. is very small one. Okay. Uh, yes, this is it. a very, very big one. Yes. Uh, if you want to explore yourself, try for mm -hmm. Google. Okay. Thank you, uh, sir. Google Classroom also is exploring. Initially, we used to use Google Classroom only. But in mm -hmm. Moodle, then I feel that Google Classroom is nothing in front of that. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Okay, so there are no questions. It's we close the session. Two people try uh, uh, register yourself. Another half an hour time is there. So all of you try explore, register yourself, and try to create a course and try to add your students to that. Okay, and uh, you don't stop here only. Really. Please continue this and use that. And that can bring some good change, transformation in the institution. Whatever I taught, that will have some effect on, the, on, uh, on that. If you so even 10 people do practically implement in your institution, then really, it's okay, whatever the course that has been launched, it will be a uh, great. So with this, so I would like to close this session. Thank you, sir. Uh, I am Akhil Varma. You have to go UGC, MMTTC, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Maratha, Vada University in Tattwadhan. Thank you, sir. 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 लर्निंग मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम के बारे में जो जानकारी आदि वो हमारे लिए काफी सहायक सिद्ध होंगी इसमें हमें मॉडल क्या है इसका एसेस कैसे कर सकते हैं इसके फीचर्स के बारे में बताया और हमें इसकी जानकारी प्राप्त हुई कि नोट्स लेक्चर असाइनमेंट स्टूडेंट के बीच में कैसे दिए जाएं ये सभी जानकारी हमारे लिए काफी महत्वपूर्ण है सर इसके लिए बहुत-बहुत आपको धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करता हूं थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वेरी मच धन्यवाद सबको नमस्कार थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच और पाठक सूचना है कि जो आपका सेकंड सेशन का जो लेक्चर रहेगा वो रहेगा स्टार्ट फॉर द 245 अपना सेशन